Hi there, my friend, and welcome back to another MFS SPK tutorial. So in the last episode, we made this uh, wonderful air conditioner. And um, this is uh, what we call a static object with an animation. And this object has an animation that runs forever, 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 and ever. But the air conditioner doesn't run forever. They do, they do run maybe only during uh, summertime because inside it's hot and you need to cool down your room. And in, during the winter, we need to switch it off to save power, especially during these days, these difficult days. And how can we tell this object that is winter? We need a special type of object called sim object. A sim object is a special object that reacts to a variable from the simulator. Uh, let's pick the real case of this um, tutorial and will be this, uh, this signal box here. As you can see we have the T here that indicates that the landings must be from uh, um, from the tail of the T to the um, to the head of the T. So in the in the case of a uh, Leniago scenery we come to runway 34 because this runway is orientated to, to the north. Okay, so I already rigged that this, um, this object as a sim object. And uh, now our wind is coming from the north, so our landing will be from south to north, runway 34. But what if we change the wind from the south? Now the object reacts and tells us that the landing will be from runway 16. Okay, okay, let's see how we can uh, build this object. And back in Blender, I have create our signal, uh, signal square, or signal square, uh, with simple objects, uh, squares, uh, and, uh, and so on. It's, it's a very simple object. And you can see, as you can see, I have the T position in the um, landing to the north, to landing to the north. To make the sim object work, we need to add another object for the other um, landing direction. And I have created, I have duplicated the T, right there. So shift D to duplicate and rotate by 180 degrees. GY. Really simple. So I made an object. Or um, oriented in one direction and one object oriented in another direction. And I save them and give them a name. So the object that um, has the orientation of the runway to runway 6, so to the south, is um, called uh, T16, and uh, the other object is called T34. Now we go ahead. We can go ahead and save all our object in the same um, way as we done um, at any time. So go to File, Export, Standard GTLFs, save in your uh, model lib folder, uh, give the texture name and uh, export. Okay, great. But there is an important thing we should do now. And then um, our object is not a scenery object, so we must pick it from the, uh, the model lib folder and put it in a sim object folder. And uh, we can create a sim object folder within the simulator, uh, adding uh, an uh, asset group. So let's see how. And now we are back into the simulator, we can load up our project. When you add sim object to your projects, it takes a while uh, for the loading. And now you can go to the inspector by clicking on your project, scroll down and add an asset group. It will be a custom asset group. And I'm gonna call this LIDL Signals Tutorial. And press enter and the type is gonna be sim object. I'm gonna press create 
And now, in project, we have the asset group uh, sim object, uh, senior tutorial. I'm gonna go to the inspector and uh, change this mm, this asset there directory. I don't want this with the sim object type, but I want this this with the uh, landmark. Uh, so in package sources, I'm gonna go to sim object and I want to have a folder called landmarks. And if you don't have already, uh, you're gonna create one called landmarks. Sim object type is not um, is not working at the moment. Okay, so package sources will be sim object landmarks and sim object landmarks. Yeah, uh, but we need that to have a folder for our um, object and it will be lidl. Signals tutorial. I'm gonna select this. So in the landmark in the asset directory, we're gonna have uh, package services, uh, simulators, landmarks, and, and the name of our object. And the output directory will be the same. Can we write it down? Maybe like this. And now we're gonna save our project. And we can close the simulator and continue in the Windows Explorer. Okay, so back in Windows Explorer, uh, let's navigate to the new folder we have, created, we have already created in Packet Sources. So go to Packet Sources, Sim Objects, Landmarks, and LIDL Senior Tutorial. And now we can see the folder that is empty. Uh, in this code folder, we're gonna create a new folder structure. And my advice is to take the folder structure from the samples of the FD SDK. So go to the MFS SDK, the samples, and pick the one from the WinSock samples, package sources, sim objects, landmarks, your model, and here it is. So back to our landmark section, LIDL Signals Tutorial. And I'm gonna copy over uh, those sources. So we have to modify those files, and we're gonna open the sim.cfg, and the title will be LIDL uh, Signals Tutorial. It's a static object because it doesn't move, it's animated, but it doesn't move. And we can save this. Inside the texture folder, we can delete everything because they are related to the windsocks. And inside the model folder, we can delete all the bin and gltf files. We don't need them. We can edit the model of GFG with the name of our file. So LIDL signals tutorial and save and rename this as LIDL signals tutorial. Mm, okay, now we can. Mm, Put here our model files that we have exported from Blender and navigate to the folder LIDL model lib, LIDL Synops tutorial. Uh, let's take the GLITF and the BIM file and uh, let's copy them to the package sources, same objects, landmarks, LIDL Synops tutorial model. And here we go. Let's open the XML. This is the original uh, XML for the WinSock. We have only one uh, LOD, so we can uh, remove uh, all the other LOD. We don't have animation, so we can remove all animation stuff. And this behavior goes away. So in the model file, we're gonna put the model, the uh, our name, so LIDL uh, signals tutorial. And now we are ready to add the code to make uh, the um, the T, the T direction uh, work in the in the simulator. I already have uh, written uh, the code, and I'm going to explain uh, that to you in a moment. And I forgot to add the texture, so in the texture folder, I'm going to copy the texture we have used in our model. So back to the um, main XML where the magic is, and now I have a bunch of code that I'm going to explain to you. So the first section are is the description of the um, LODs of your model. You can have uh, multiple LODs. Now I have one. Now let's put this inside 
uh, zero, so it's visible until uh, the, the model disappears from the, from the scene. And let's explore the next section, which is the behavior. Inside the behavior section, we have a component section. The component is a part of our um, scene in Blender, of our uh, GLTF. Yeah because our GLTF contains all the parts from our uh, Blender scene. It has an um, ID, we can call this whatever we want, and it has a node. The node name comes from the Blender file. If you remember, we have two T. One is the T for the runway 1.6, and the other is the T for runway 34, and the name is the same x0 underscore t16 for this one. Now let's go ahead with the code. Now we have a visibility section. So in this section, we want to control the visibility of this component. And the visibility takes two parameters, one and zero. One is visible and zero is non-visible. So inside the visibility, we have a section called parameter, this one. Inside the parameter section, we have another section called code, and this code will give us the one or the zero. And let's uh, give a look at this code. We have an ambient wind direction in degrees. So this is the variable that comes from the simulator. The simulator gives us a, a number, which is the ambient wind direction in degrees. And now we can use it to have values. Okay, now we have to tell the simulator how our sim object will work. And this is done in the code section. So we want to display the T16, so landing when the wind comes from the south. So if the wind comes from the south, we're going to land against the wind and we're going to use runway 16. And the wind comes from the south. When it comes from 67 degrees all the way up to 247 degrees. And in the code, we have the wind, and we have 67, and we have this symbol that in XML means greater than. So it's this symbol here in um, mathematic, okay? This is greater than. So when the wind is greater than 67 and the wind is less than 240, 247, but I've written 240, and LT is the symbol, the symbol is less than 240 degrees the value will be 1, otherwise the value will be 0, the value of the visibility. So if this condition is greater than 67 and less than 2 for 0, my value will be 1, so I'm going to show the T16, otherwise my value will be 0 and I'm not going to show the T16. On the other way, if the wind comes from the north, then I'm gonna land in the in, in runway 34. So I'm gonna show the T34, and this is written like this. So if the wind is greater than 241, and the wind is uh, 0 to 360, so our value will be maximum 360, or the wind is less than 67. I'm going to show the T34. So let's go to the code. If the wind direction is greater than 241 or the wind direction is less than 67, then my visibility will be true. Else, my visibility will be zero. This kind of code is called uh, um, RPN, that is um, Reverse Polish Notation or uh, Postfix Code. 
you don't have parentheses in this code and you have the operator after the operand. So we have two operands and the operator. This can be every operator like um, greater than or um, oh, um, or it is greater than or less than or plus or minus or divide or uh, or equal to we have a lot of operator and uh, we can use them uh, every time we need uh, a specific value in this case only greater and uh, uh, less than are um, used okay so we can now save our code Let's compile this. If you know, I'm gonna use the, the FS package tool, which is very handy. The FS package tool is inside the um, MFCK tools bin FS package tool. You can copy it to your uh, main project folder and use it to compile all your projects, just like as in the simulator. So you can uh, check if the all the compilation is good, if all your work is good, uh, without going into the simulator and press the build all, it takes about 40 seconds, it's doing stuff, and as you can see, we have done something and we have zero fail. Press any key to continue, and we have now a packages with our scenery I used to copy the final package to my community, and then we can um, try our snow object in the simulator. Okay, so now we are back into the simulator and we can add uh, our new sim object. So as a type, we're gonna search for sim object. I'm gonna choose all or our package and search for the LIDL. So we have LIDL Senior Tutorial. I'm gonna add it to the simulation. And here it is. I'm gonna orient it in the right way. Now I can test it by changing the wind. If the wind comes from the south, you're gonna land from the north. Let's make it okay. So you can see even uh, from the flags, the wind is coming from the south and we're gonna land against the wind. If the wind comes from the north, now you're gonna land from 34 and we're gonna land against the wind. Okay, when dealing with sim objects, you want to be sure of the values you are um, uh, calculating uh, from the simulator and uh, inside the SDK there is a wonderful tool and it's the SDK samples simvar watcher inside the bin 64 release there is an XE you can launch it you can press connect and that is connected to the simulator and you can choose the um, simvar you want so I'm gonna go for um, uh, wind direction and I want it in degrees and other requests. So our wind is coming from 3 to 2. And this wind is coming from 3 to 1, 3 to 2. This is updated every alpha second, split second. So in the case you want to create a sim object that reacts to the precipitation in your environment, uh, like rain or snow, you can use, you should use an, another variable, which is called ambient precip state, and the unit will be an amp and a request. So now when it's sunny, the, the value is two, but if we change the value, rain, make it rain. So the value of the precip state is four or if it is knowing, the value of the precipitate state is eight. So whenever the value of, let's make it overcast, overcast, and we are back to two because there is no precipitation. Uh, let's make a storm. 
and now the storm is 4 because it's raining. So whenever the value is uh, greater than, uh, let's say, 3, we can show uh, an object related to a precipitation, like an open umbrella, for example. And, and so if we want to show a snowman uh, based on the ambient temperature, um, we can use the ambient temperature in Celsius parameter. So you can do uh, a handful of, um, you can do several things with uh, objects and it is up uh, to you, it is up to your imagination because uh, the potential in the sim is uh, pretty large. Uh, I hope you have, um, you, you like this tutorial. If you need more information about uh, sim objects uh, or um, any other stuff, you can write me on Discord and uh, I'm gonna respond to you, of course. <laughs> I'm here for this. Thank you so much and uh, see you the next time and subscribe if you like this video. Bye bye.